istnieją sprzeczne teorie i doniesienia naukowe na temat glutenu. Jedne zalecają spożywanie go jako zupełnie nieszkodliwego dla zdrowia, inne przeciwnie. Uznają gluten za czynnik powodujący rozszczelnienie jelit i co się z tym wiąże? Wywoływanie chorób autoimmunologicznych. Jaka jest prawda o glutenie? The truth is something in the middle. Um, it is true that uh, gluten uh, can induce, you know, increased gut permeability in everybody. But it's not true that this will lead to autoimmune disease in the totality of people that eventually will eat gluten and will have increased permeability. All depends what you find on the other side of the barrier, the intestine. For what we know, the vast majority of people that eat gluten, after that, this ingestion increases the permeability of the gut will have no consequences because the immune system can deal with the increased passage of this molecule and get rid of it. And actually this is the way that we induce tolerance. If on the other hand you're genetically predisposed to develop a gluten-related disorder, when gluten goes on the other side of the barrier, may eventually trigger an immune response that can lead to autoimmunity but that happened in a very small minority percentage. Dlaczego gluten nam szkodzi i w jaki sposób dochodzi do rozszczelnienia jelit? Gluten is a protein actually, it's a mixture of proteins that uh, was introduced in our diet only 10,000 years ago with agriculture. So we have not been evolving to eat a molecule like gluten. It's a strange protein that is extremely rich of two amino acids prolins and glutamines. And for that reason, we don't have the digestive enzymes to completely dismantle gluten. If you consider gluten, like any other protein, as a sort of pearl necklace, the way that we handle these proteins, we have to break them in pieces that we technically call amino, uh, peptides, and then we have to peel these pearls one at a time. They are the amino acids, and they are digested and absorbed that way. The problem for gluten is that, unfortunately, we do not have the enzymes to complete this process. The best that we can do is to break the pearl necklace in pieces. But these pieces are not completely digested. Some of these pieces have been uh, studied to see what kind of biological effect they have. Two of these peptides seems to cross talk with the cell to instigate and instruct the cell to release zonulin, this molecule that increases gut permeability. And that's the reason why gluten can eventually cause gut permeability increase because of these peptides that eventually will cause the recent zoning with subsequent increased permeability and passage of molecule on the other side of the intestine barrier. W jaki sposób przepuszczalność jelit wpływa na nasze zdrowie? The consequence of any chronic inflammatory diseases is this interplay between the genes and the environment. So these two worlds are normally segregated, divided by these barriers the most important being the intestine barrier. So the genes that live in our body and these triggers that come from the external world. Any inflammatory process is the consequence of this exaggerated exposure to triggers from the environment. So under normal circumstances, if the barrier works well, that should not happen. And again, if we have a situation of quote-unquote leaky gut or loss of barrier function, rather than to have a very tightly controlled trafficking of this antigen, they flow into your body continuously. So the immune system is overwhelmed and instigated to start to react against this enemy by unleashing inflammation, then on a specific genetic background, will lead to chronic inflammation, including autoimmunity. So imagine, for example, that, you know, the gut barrier is like a traffic light, that when you have the red light, the car cannot come through, 
and then you have the, red, the green light in which the car they can come through. If the traffic lights works well, only under specific circumstances you give the okay of this molecule to come through. Now imagine that your traffic light doesn't work anymore and it's turned green in both directions. That's chaos. And that's pretty much what happened when you have leaky gut. Jak możemy sprawdzić, czy gluten nam szkodzi? The misconception that because gluten create leaky gut to everybody and therefore it's detrimental for everybody, it's really raising a lot of confusion. You know, the reason why gluten caused this increased gut permeability is because we did not co-evolve to eat it. And therefore, true, everybody eats gluten will eventually have this increased uh, permeability. But it's only in a very small percentage of people that this will have clinical consequences. If we talk about seeded disease, that is easy because we have specific biomarkers. There are these antibodies that are called anti-tissue transglutaminase antibodies or anti-TTG antibodies. They are very, very good in terms of sensitivity and specificity to tell who may have a problem with gluten related to celiac disease. And then you can confirm the diagnosis by performing an endoscopy with a biopsy that shows the autoimmune insult that characterizes celiac disease. Similarly, we can have good tests to diagnose people that have wheat allergy. So different kind of antibodies are involved and the search for antibodies can tell us if you have a reaction to uh, gluten in terms of an allergic reaction. For non-celiac gluten sensitivity, unfortunately, we don't have biomarkers yet. So to identify the people with non-celiac gluten sensitivity, that when ingest gluten will have an increased gut permeability that leads to the disease, is still a work in progress and they are diagnosed by exclusion criteria. Meaning, if they have a problem when they eat gluten-containing grains, if this problem will go away when they go on a gluten-free diet, if celiac disease has been ruled out, and if wheat allergy has been ruled out, they are defined to be affected by non-celiac gluten sensitivity. This uh, in uh, um, waiting for the identification and um, validation of biomarker for non-serial gluten sensitivity that we don't have yet. Czy taki prosty test buraczkowy może być miarodajnym narzędziem diagnostycznym nieszczelnego jelita? The, the tests for leaky gut are again a work in progress. Um, one is the, again this red beads that we, uh, you just mentioned. There is now this zonulin ELISA test uh, that is used more and more that can be probably the best way to measure gut permeability because an increased zone has been demonstrated to be directly correlated with an increased gut permeability. There, the only thing that you need to do is to collect a specimen, a biospecimen, that can be blood, urine or stools and then measure on those specimens the amount of zonulin that correlates with increased gut permeability. Czy zboża, które obecnie spożywamy, różnią się od tych sprzed 40 czy 100 lat? Dlaczego tak dużo nietolerancji na gluten mamy w obecnych czasach? This is a, a very interesting question that we keep asking ourselves over and over again. What we have done to really fuel those epidemics, this exaggerated zone release, um, this continuous exposure to you know, enemies that leads to chronic inflammation. When we talk about gluten as the environment on the environmental trigger, the question is, are we eating too much gluten now compared in the past? Is gluten being genetically modified so it is more offensive for us? There are other situations at play that can explain these epidemics in terms of what we've done to gluten that now becomes such a big problem for us. Said that, of course, you know, these grains have been changed over in the millennia. The Greeks and Romans used to eat a wheat that had only 4% gluten content at that time. And over the years, 
farmers to increase the yield, increase the amount of, you know, um, breeding um, cultivars to bring now a plant that has roughly 12% of gluten of dry weight, um, you know, content. But this has been like this for two or three hundred years, so cannot explain the recent epidemics. So something else needs to be a play, and now we go from the fact that I just said to theories. The most logical one, at least in my opinion, is that, you know, the way that we handle these grains is very different than uh, in the past. Our grandparents used to eat a bread that was made overnight. So you take the flour, you take the yeast, you take the water, you make the dough, and you wait for 16, 80 hours before to put this in the oven and have bread. During these 16, 80 hours, the enzymes from yeast that have the capability to dismantle these toxic elements of gluten that we cannot because we don't have the enzyme, will decrease the load of the toxic peptides, including those that will release zonulin, to a very low level. Now we make bread in two hours. So the amount of toxic elements from gluten, toxic peptides, it's much higher even if the amount of gluten-containing grains that we eat is less. Uh, another variable, pesticides. You know, there are pesticides on these plants that we didn't uh, used to have before. What kind of impact these pesticides they have on our immune system to instigate the, an immune response? We don't know. And last and not least, uh, our grandparents, they know exactly where gluten was coming from. If you eat bread, you eat gluten. If you eat pasta, you eat gluten. If you drink beer, you introduce gluten. Because the food industry uses gluten promiscuously as a, a filler. So you may have eaten chicken that should not have gluten, or ketchup that should not have gluten, and you are ingest ingesting gluten uh, as an extra source. So I think that all these elements are play. Czy w chorobach autoimmunologicznych typu RZS Hashimoto cukrzyca należy wyeliminować gluten z diety? So, well, first of all, I want to stress that gluten is only one of the many factors that can cause an increase in gut permeability. You know, if if you have a gut dysbiosis, that can increase gut permeability. If you drink too much alcohol you can have gut permeability increase. If you eat too many spicy foods, you can have gut permeability increase. Stress can cause gut permeability increase. And I can go on and on and on. Having a loss of barrier function that leads to our immunity is the consequence of many factors, including gluten. In my humble opinion, while it's for sure that everybody with serious disease will benefit to go on a gluten-free diet, I think there's going to be a subgroup of people with autoimmunity that can also benefit going on a gluten-free diet. But we don't have a way to identify these people yet. So the top priority is to find biomarkers that will tell us which of that group of people with rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto, diabetes, may indeed have gluten as the initiator of the process so that they should go on a gluten-free diet. Jak dbać o równowagę mikrobiomu, który jest kluczowy dla naszego zdrowia? Czy zaleca pan suplementację probiotyków? Definitely I believe that there are growing evidence that the microbiome may impact if and when we develop diseases. Let's make the example that we both are affected by type 1 diabetes. And your type 1 diabetes was due because a good microorganism, a probiotic like lactobacillus, went down. And you have less balance in your microbiome. And let's say that in my case, was another probiotic that went down. Uh, let's say that was bacteroidetes that went down. Without knowing this, 
what kind of probiotics I should give to you to be beneficial and which one I should give to myself. Of course, if I take lactobacilli, I would not have any benefit because it's a different bacterium that I'm missing. You will benefit of that because you were missing the lactobacilli and vice versa. If you take, you know, bifidobacterium or you take, you know, um, bacteroidetes, your diabetes will not go any better because you're missing another, you know, species that's lactobacillus. So all this to say, until we got to that level, as we end up to vilify the promiscuous use of antibiotics like penicillin, when we thought that we can treat all infection with penicillin and see what kind of disaster we created, when we learned that that was not the case. I think that probiotics, they hold a tremendously important, promising effect to modulate the microbiome, but using formulated pharmacological probiotics right now, I believe is a little bit premature. If you really want to do something to try to balance your microbiome, at this moment, I will go natural. I will use naturally current probiotics like the one from yogurts.